Want to know how to edit your pup's photos for Instagram using Moody Tones and Lightroom? Well, in today's episode, I'm going to show you in 10 easy steps just how you can. Let's get after it. First off, one definition of a moody photograph is one whose purpose is to elicit an emotional response from the viewer due to its light and composition. Some might even say it's something that gives an impression of melancholy or mystery. I always shoot raw photos rather than JPEGs on my Sony a7R 3 camera in order to have the most dynamic range available to edit with in my post-processing software, Lightroom or Photoshop. The plan here is to get the moody look, so we're going to manipulate the contrast, highlights, shadows, use the haze color temperature, saturation, luminance, the tone curve, split toning, and a little bit of vignetting. Also, if you're interested in similar videos where I go over Instagram photo editing techniques, I'll leave a link in the YouTube card in the description section below. So with that out of the way, let's fire up Lightroom and set up our photograph by completing some prep work. For step one, we're going to create a virtual copy. This is a great way to create multiple versions of a single shot and something I generally do before starting my initial edits. We're just going to right click on our photograph here and click create virtual copy. So now any changes are non-destructive to our original photograph. For step two, we're going to crop our photograph and enable profile corrections. Go over to the crop tool and click original. Then enter custom five by four aspect ratio for the Instagram standard. Then use the rule of thirds grid to pick the perfect composition for your photograph. We will also go ahead and enable profile corrections to compensate for any lens idiosyncrasies that often show up as a darkening of the corners. This is kind of known as vignetting or some kind of distortion which can make the image look like it's being wrapped around a sphere. Applying lens profile corrections in Lightroom is pretty easy. Simply select the image you want to apply the lens correction profile to and open up the develop module by clicking on the develop tab at the top of the screen or press the D key. We're already in the develop tab, but make sure you're there. Scroll down until you see lens corrections and then enable profile corrections. For step three, we're going to complete our local adjustments. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you can see the changes I'm about to make. Push the command in the equals or the plus key to get right in there. Then select the brush tool or press the K key. For the eyes, I'm going to boost the exposure by about 0.5 and the clarity at about 4 by using the brush tool. You can use the bracket keys and that'll make your brush bigger or smaller. You can press the O key and that'll allow you to view the adjustments that you're making with that nice little red paint. Now let's isolate the catch lights to really bring those eyes to life by boosting their exposure. Again, you can press the O key and that'll allow you to view the adjustments that you're making. Next, we're going to go ahead and use the brush tool or press the K key. For the fur, we're going to focus on boosting the sharpness and the clarity by 4 for the face. Often, there are heavy shadows on the tongue that we may want to lift. So take the brush tool and lift the exposure. Just one little quick tip here. One way to actually save the settings for the brushes that you use all the time is just to go over to the little letters next to the effect and click on the little drop down there. And you'll just scroll down to where it says save current settings as a new preset. Click there and we could just call this one Disney Tongue. So then it'll just be one of our brushes that we can use all the time. We won't have to keep recreating this every single time we want to use the same settings. For the background, I'm going to use a radial filter to reduce the sharpness and drop the shadows to focus the viewer's attention to the subject. We're going to go ahead and check before and after. So now that that's complete, let's move on to the 10 easy steps to get the moody look. One quick tip here, if you didn't use a gray card when you shot to get your white balance in camera, you can go ahead and use, just to get a great starting point, the auto white balance feature in Lightroom and it will get your colors closer to what they look like when you took your original photograph. Alright, so similar to a human, I'm going to protect our skin tones, but in this case our fur tones. So I'm going to use the radial filter tool to do that. Just take your time while you're trying to make the adjustments. All I'm trying to do here is really just resize our radial filter so I'm only adjusting the areas outside of his body but not affecting the color of his coat. So I'm going to go ahead here and just increase the contrast. Then also I'm going to decrease the highlights just a bit. 
You can do this, especially if you shot your shot with somewhat of a blown out sky. This will really help. And I'm also going to decrease the shadows for that darker tone. By the way, if you enjoy the content we put out on this channel, now is a great time to smash the like button and write Disney in the comments section below. So another feature that's optional, but it can often work some wonders depending on your photograph, you can use the dehaze feature to add or remove atmospheric haze from a photo. It can really help bring out the detail in the background. Think about it as black and white photos need a lot of contrast to look great. The regular contrast slider just makes the whites whiter and the blacks darker. A more extreme global effect is what you generally get. Dehaze is actually going to help with those middle gray areas. So now we're just gonna adjust our color temperature. I'm just gonna make it a little bit cooler. When you do your adjustments, just adjust it to your liking, whether that be warmer or cooler. But for the general moody look, I'm going for somewhat of a coolish tone. Just trying to adjust it to somewhere that feels about right. So now I'm going to go ahead and just adjust the saturation just a little bit. Just trying to get it just right. Yeah. So now we're just going to come down to our HSL slider here and I am going to adjust the greens just slightly to not make them be so prominent in the background. With that, I'm going to go ahead and desaturate my greens. Just once again to reduce that prominence and get the focus on Disney. Well, there's probably a little bit of orange in Disney's coat with those patches right there. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is take the radial filter tool here to protect his coat. Again, that's just going to filter out those changes. So I'm only making them to the background area. Now, if you want to see the changes that you're making, you can just press the O key to see the little red paint. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and desaturate those oranges a little bit. And I'm trying to get that out of the little bridge there. So it's not so prominent. Again, I'm going for the moody look. I'll also adjust my luminance here to just bring down that brightness a bit. So the last thing I want to do here is work on our split toning. I'm going to start with the highlights here and just pick a color and see how I want to make my adjustment and just reduce that saturation list a little bit so it's not coming on so strong. So we'll have that color in our highlights. For the shadows, I want to put something in the shadows, but first, once again, I want to go ahead and protect Disney's coat. So I'm going to use the radial filter because again, those blues and those blacks, I really don't want to distort his natural look. And then I'll move on and try to make an adjustment into the shadows for just a small touch of color. Want to reduce the saturation, don't want it to come on too strong, but just enough. I'm now I'm going to take another radial filter here to focus the attention on Disney. Remember to select the area inside to be affected instead of the outside, just go ahead and invert your mask so that now we can focus these edits on the inside of the circle here. I am just going to boost the exposure a bit to focus the viewer on the subject of the photograph. I'm also going to add a graduated filter here to go ahead and create somewhat of a vignette and darken the corners by lowering the exposure and that effect is going to slowly be integrated into the photograph similar to what the name sounds like in a gradient form. And you see it's just focusing the viewer on our subject. Now I'm going to scroll down to our tone curve here and just boost our midtones a bit so we can add a little bit more contrast. So I'm going to lower my highlights just a bit and make our darks just a little bit darker by adding another point on our tone curve here and just pushing those down. For some finishing touches here, we're just going to right click on our photograph and edit in Adobe Photoshop just quickly. There are some clone stamp tools in Healing Brush and Lightroom, but honestly, this doesn't do as good a job as it does in Photoshop. You can Google this pretty easily. There's a ton of videos on how to remove objects in Photoshop. This was just a quick example. Our original image was shot on a Sony a7R 3 with an 85mm 1.8 portrait lens. So this is how I edited this photo of Disney in Lightroom. If you like what you saw or you learned a little something today, please give this video a thumbs up so the YouTube algorithm knows that it's good. That means hit it an odd number of times so it turns blue. Also, be sure to hit the bell icon and enable all notifications so you don't miss out on any of our future content. Thanks so much for tuning into the channel. 
more content coming soon. We just hit 500 subscribers, so thank you so much for that, and we will see you in the next video.